Welcome back to Brandon Farm. Today's super cold. So we actually had basically like a, a snow day, but in Texas that means it's an ice day. No work, no school, you're stuck at home, you can't go anywhere. So what do I do? <laughs> I bundle up in all of my hunting clothes and I go to work in my greenhouse and in my garden and in my chicken coop. So a couple things that I worked on today. So I had a major draft in our brand new greenhouse. Um, when we put the roof on, it was basically like just running two by fours, which left a gap because of the corrugated um, vinyl has like a pretty big gap. And then when you sandwich the two together, it left a significant gap. So I tried plastic. I tried making my own pillows to shove up there. That way I can stop the draft. Um, I just, I would stand back after each one and be like, this is horrible. It looks horrible. And it's our brand new greenhouse and it's beautiful and I don't want it to be horrible looking. <laughs> so I took all of that down and I came up with a new solution and I think it's actually going to work. Now, had I painted these beforehand, it probably would have looked prettier, but I didn't for a number of reasons. For one, it's freezing out and the paint would not adhere correctly because it's too cold. Um, also, I just wanted the draft fixed, okay? So maybe one day I'll take a paintbrush to it or maybe some spray paint or whatever and paint it black. But for now, I have no draft and it doesn't look awful. And it's warmer in here. So I think that's a win-win. Let me show you. Okay, right up here, you can see where I put the two by four. There was a big gap right between the corrugated plastic vinyl and basically the two by four of the frame of the structure. So all I did was cut two by fours to the perfect length in between the running two by fours on the roof, put them all the way down and it now has cut out the draft. I also added it to the back side. Now these I had to add on the back side, not the inside, or I should say the outside. Uh, because it had these two by fours spacers and I couldn't get a good seal. So everything is fairly sealed up. And like I said, no more draft. There's just a little bit of airflow, as you can see through the corrugated, but I'm going to call that ventilation. So what do you think? I think it's going to be great. I mean, this is not like a, I do everything correct YouTube channel, right? This is a, I need to get it done. This is what my problem is. This is what I, I'm going to do to fix it. And this is how I'm going to do it. And then I get it done. Whether that looks beautiful, whether it's the, the right way, or the proper way it's done. My problem is solved. I can now work in my greenhouse comfortably, even though I've got all this crap on, I really could take this big jacket on, but I'm fixing to take you outside and kind of give you some more tips and tricks on chickens. Um, in this cold weather here in Texas, we've hit like lows of, I don't know, 23, probably lower than that at night. I don't really know. Um, it's really cold here and we have this thing where it's like Texas snow, which is basically just ice and what I like to call basically dipping dots. So dipping dots falling from the sky and they just collect on the ground and then they just freeze. So it's real chilly. The chickens are cold. Um, so I want to give you some just kind of tips and tricks on how to keep your chickens warm in this kind of environment. Now, I'm sure other people do it different ways. I'm sure there's many different ways, many right ways to do this. Um, but like I said, I had a problem. I knew what I needed to solve the problem and I solved the problem. We did it the Grow Brandon Farm way. Take it or leave it. Okay, so a couple things that you can do to help your chickens get through this cold weather is to feed them, okay? You wanna feed them a high protein um, chicken feed, whether that's your pellets, your crumbles, your mini pellets, um, things like that. You wanna feed them a high protein. Um, you also wanna give them scratch right before bed, right before they go up, um, or a high protein snack, i.e. mealworms and sunflower seeds and well, I just have mealworms, sunflower seeds, and scratch. That's what I use, and it seems to be working. So I like to give that to them first thing in the morning, and I like to give it to them right before they go up for the for the night. 
Um, if you did know, chickens will automatically go up when it gets dark. And by go up, I mean they go up into their chicken coop. Even though I do have two chickens that will sleep on this outside roost. Don't get me started. I don't know how that happened. I don't know why they don't want to go up, but they don't. So anyway, tip number one, feed your chicken. Okay, tip number two, you want to have a heated waterer. Let me show you. All right, this baby right here is a heated waterer and it works wonders. Now, when I was first becoming a chicken owner, chicken keeper, um, I would come out here every night and I would unplug it and I would come out every morning and I would replug it. As the years went by, <laughs> I got uh, a little on the lazy side because it's really, really cold out and, when, and it's dark and you just don't want to come down here, especially whenever you don't have work so you can sleep in. So I've just been leaving it plugged in and I've just got it plugged into this external um, extension cord and I've got it sealed um, with a weather connector, I guess you could say. Let me show you that. I have the heated water connected to this external outdoor rated um, extension cord extender and then I have this weatherproof connector that just opens up and then you have your external uh, extension cord plugged into the other one inside here protected from all the ice and the water and it's working like like a charm so as you can see the water is not frozen it is well thawed out there we go so i have plenty in there for them and i just use this one i think this is a five gallon uh, i don't know how big this one is but i only have the one for 23 chickens and it works fine that blue bucket back there is solid frozen Another thing you want to do or to kind of be mindful of when having chickens in the cold weather is drafts. You don't want a lot of drafts. You really don't want, you don't want any drafts in your chicken coop. So right here we had a big draft. Um, this was our kind of eve to um, our chicken coop and we just zipped some screws down to hold that down so that way that there's not a big draft. Um, one way to tell, my opinion, the only way to tell if there's going to be a draft in your coop is to get in the coop. So I actually have to get in right here through my big clean out and I'll just sit in there and kind of just wait a minute. So that way I can feel if there's any drafts coming through. Um, you do want ventilation. You don't want to seal it up completely, but you don't want major drafts coming through because that would be like a frostbite issue on their combs and their wattles. And that's not good. One thing that I did this year that I hadn't done in years past, and I feel like now looking at it would be like a rookie mistake, talking about drafts, um, well, right along here, I just have chicken wire. So basically from the roof to my metal sheeting down here, right in this little area was all chicken wire. Well, this year, I just took two packages of like a, a plastic drop cloth, that's all it is. So I just unrolled it and stapled it temporarily. That way when they're in the run, if it's like super windy or if it's like super like drizzly, their feed's not gonna get wet, number one. Number two, they're not gonna have a giant draft. And number three, it's gonna keep them warmer. I feel like it's freaking brilliant. And I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. Um, I think last year I ended up just tarping the entire roof which is already metal. <laughs> so I was like, what is the point? So this year I feel like we've really nailed it with this drop cloth because they still need sun. So it's gotta be clear. Um, you don't wanna put like a dark black tarp over it because if they don't have sun, they won't be happy. And if they're not happy, they don't lay eggs. So my advice would be to use a clear plastic sheeting of some kind to kind of block the wind and the elements from where they hang out all day. Back in the greenhouse um, for the last tip I have. Okay, let's go over. Feed, heated waterer, drafts. Yep, the last tip. So four big tips for chicken keeping. Number four would be to add more bedding. So you might hear this called the deep litter method. Basically you want like six to eight inches of bedding in their coop. Um, 
They like to kick a lot of mine out. I use the pine shavings just from Tractor Supply, the big old bale because it's the cheapest. Don't come for me, don't judge me. If I could, if I had it in a perfect world, money was no option, I would absolutely get the hemp bedding. I recently purchased my first bag this year because um, I wanted to try it out and I got it off of Chewy.com. But I tell you what, it is awesome. So this is the bedding that I got. Eaton Pet Bedding. Hemp. It is a lot different from the pine shavings. It's finer, thinner. Um, but I tell you what, when you go to scoop out and clean out your coop, it's so much easier. It's like, it's like that weird clumping cat litter, right? So it's just easier to clean out. It doesn't make as much dust. Um, I really like it. So if I had it my way, that's what it would be in my coop. But sorry, sucks to suck. The tractor supply pine shavings are just cheaper. So my tip number four would be add more bedding to your coop. The more bedding, the more insulation, the drier it can be. Um, and with the deep litter method, all you're doing is getting that top layer of poop and pulling it out and then just kind of fluffing up the rest and then adding more. So that's my tips for chicken keeping in the cold weather. Again, this is Texas. We don't really get cold weather. We get like two, three, sometimes a week of cold um, a year. That's it. And we don't get much snow, although I guess two years ago we did get snow, but most of the time it's ice. It's Texas snow. We just can't drive and the whole state shuts down. So that's my tips for chicken keeping. If you have other tips for chicken keeping, please drop it in the comments below. I'd love to know what you guys do to help your chickens stay warm during this cold weather. Happy chickens lay eggs. How about this? This work for you? Ooh, I got a bonus tip for you. Okay, bonus tip. Um, and this one's not really for chicken keeping. Although I guess it falls under the category of chicken keeping. Collect your eggs often. Why? Because it freezes. And when your eggs freeze, they crack and they are unusable. So if you collect your eggs often, i.e. the morning, afternoon, evening, you have a better chance of having a good egg, a not cracked egg from the cold weather. Now, sometimes it cannot be avoided and you will have that occasional frozen egg. It is what it is. Um, me personally, I won't eat the frozen eggs just because it's a weird concept to me, but I guess you could thaw it out and maybe eat it right away. It's up to you. Egg safety 101. So anyway, I'm just gonna hang out in my greenhouse. Hope you guys enjoyed a video on chicken keeping. I am a chicken owner of three years, going on three years. Um, so not that long, but I have learned every year more and more and more and more um, on different things, different tips, different tricks that you can do to help your chickens in one way or another. So like I said before, you guys have chicken tips and tricks, leave them in the comments below. We'd really appreciate it. We'd love to chat with you on how you keep your chickens safe and happy and healthy. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and listening to me ramble about chickens. Chickens are a big part of this page. We are all about worms, chickens, and gardening. So if it has anything to do with that, I'm in. I'm all in. This video is just for chickens. Mostly, although I did have a little bit of greenhouse footage in here um, with the drafts that we've got fixed. Man, it is nice in here. I tell you what, uh, I'm definitely looking into which seeds I can start now. Um, my previous video, as you guys saw, I started some sweet peppers and some hot peppers. Um, I also put my onions in the ground, some snap, yeah, snap peas and then my muscadine grapes. But I am seeing where you can maybe start like your spinaches, your lettuce, maybe even your cabbage. So I'm gonna look further into that and see if I can just start that in the ground directly or if I need to pot and then transplant. Um, so that'll probably be the next video. Stay tuned for that. 
So if you like our videos, if you like our content, if you're here for chickens, worms, and gardening, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time. Put these eggs in my jacket pocket without my jacket being on. How much you want to bet I crack them whenever I put it on? Just the risk I'm willing to take. My husband started a fire in the house, fireplace, and uh, what do I do? I come out here and freeze my butt off in the garden, in my greenhouse, doing chicken projects and greenhouse projects and all, all the outside projects when it's 23 degrees outside. Don't let me forget an eggs in this jacket. I'm gonna get my scrap mealworms. I'm going to give it to my chickens. Okay. Someone's honking. Three ply. I don't know what they call that exactly. I just opened it and threw it away. But anyway, it's a... Uh, I think that might be the last tip. Okay, let's go. My Happy chickens lay eggs. Because I almost dropped one. Well, I can't carry it that many in my hand anymore. Plus my hands are kind of cold. Anyway. Freeze frame. I should get a better freeze frame.